Well, good afternoon. Um, before we start to eat, I'd like to just welcome everyone to the 21st Annual Potts Grove Alumni Honor Roll Program. Uh, my name is Gary Dorenzo, uh, Potts Grove Class of 1980, uh, and I've also had the privilege to return to Potts Grove uh, and work there through this past September when I retired. Um, at 41 years old, I might add, so... Uh, <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> I would like to extend a warm welcome to uh, our guest today, our guests of honor, uh, including former faculty, alumni, and our distinguished inductees. Um, congratulations to the three of you on this wonderful honor. Before we get started with lunch, I'd like to acknowledge the members of the Honor Roll Committee. Um, and this is a group of former Potts Grove teachers, um, and each year they present a new, diverse, and deeply talented group um, that, that become inductees. And as you can see from this sheet on your uh, insert, uh, it's a pretty established and uh, very um, noteworthy group of names uh, from Potts Grove's history. Uh, they present uh, a group of talented inductees each year. Their work on this program is extensive and time consuming. And yet each year they put forth a wonderful and deserving slate of inductees that really reflect the many talents and accomplishments of Potts Grove graduates. So I know they hate doing this, but we're gonna do it anyway. I'd like to ask the, the individuals that are members of the Alumni Honor Roll Committee to stand and be recognized because again, their efforts are, not, are noteworthy. Our two co-chairs, uh, Bev Reber and Dora Jean Testa, DJ. <laughs> Linda Cole. Dorothy Istanis. Rose Hoffman in the back. Bob Reel. And also, that are not here, Jim Bassel, uh, Addison Davidson, John Miko, Kathy Williams, and Charlie Yon. Um, again, thank you very much for all your efforts. Also, a big thank you to PCTV uh, Network and Mr. Gus Tellis, who's filming this program. Uh, for those that are unable to attend, Gus continues to provide programming throughout our community, and it's a wonderful community service. Uh, and I encourage you to check out the PCTV network or go to their website for the many offerings that Gus produces. At this time, I would like to introduce the superintendent of Potts Grove School District for a few remarks, Dr. David Finnerty. Thank you, sir. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, first of all, welcome everybody. Congratulations to the awardees. Um, I'm very proudly, very proud to count myself among uh, the profession of educators. Um, it is a very important job and a often difficult job, uh, but impacting the lives uh, of students has a generational impact and uh, I congratulate each of you on, on, on your impact and think of the thousands of students that, that the people in this room have uh, positively impacted. Um, I also want to congratulate uh, you on retirement. Uh, at some point, that would be lovely as well, I think, perhaps. <laughs> um, I, I'm very proud to be part of the Potts Grove community. I'm still very new to the community. I've been with the district for about a year and a half. Uh, without exception, everyone I meet uh, and have met uh, in my year and a half here has been uh, a just amazing, uh, their, their passion for the community and for uh, supporting student growth is just amazing and uh, that's your legacy. Um, so again, thank you for that. Um, again, congratulations to the awardees and uh, congratulations on having this event. I know the numbers are down uh, this year, but this is pretty special. I don't know other districts that have this and I, uh, uh, I, I hope this continues to grow and uh, I'd like to be here again uh, next year talking to you. So thank you. And before I turn the program over to uh, Mrs. Cole, I would like to introduce our two board members from the school board as well, Mrs. Patty Grimm and Dr. Charles Nippert that are in attendance today as well. 
So at this time, I would like to ask uh, Linda Cole to uh, come up to the podium and give us an invocation, at which time uh, following we'll start our lunch and uh, continue after your lunch. So thank you. So nice to be here again uh, to see everybody and to meet some new, well, meet. I do remember your names. Most of you honorees, I, I didn't have. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I looked up to some of you guys because of things you did, but uh, it just, just was not the subject I was teaching that you were interested in. So <laughs> um, I'm glad to be honoring you today. So now if you would um, bow your heads for a short prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today to honor those from the, who had Pottsgrove roots and have grown in their lives to become outstanding citizens of your world. We also recognize these uh, the, whose path we crossed, thinking, uh, thanking them for the encouragement and the knowledge and also the little things in life that they were able to do to help us along our way. In this difficult world today, we ask that you continue to show us the way to help others. Protect us. Give us the strength and the courage when times are challenging. And now, today, go with us as with faith we continue to spread love, peace, and joy to each other. Amen. And uh, each year, the Honor Roll Committee accepts nominations to include anyone connected to the Potts Grove School District. Individuals can include former teachers, graduates, administrators, secretaries, or custodians, volunteers from PTOs or booster clubs, and school board members. Yes, even school board members. For those nominations, the committee selects the individuals to be honored at this luncheon and to be forever recognized on a perpetual plaque in the Potts Grove District Office. You can see the members of this select group in your program today. And this year's inductees are once again a very impressive group who have truly distinguished themselves during and after their days at Potts Grove. So at this time, let's meet them now to introduce our first inductee, Mrs. Dorothy Istanis, to introduce Mr. Matt Hillman. Uh, hello, everybody. I here's quite a like to honor all these distinguished people here today. The uh, honorees are part of a very rare group. Um, <clears throat> I had Matt for four years in French. Not too many people ever went through four years of French. And uh, Matt graduated from Potts Grove in 1994. Um, he then graduated from Albright with a BA in philosophy and political science. I thought that was very interesting because, uh, gee, what the heck do you do with philosophy? Well, Matt's found a lot of things to do with philosophy. He's dedicated his career, <clears throat> excuse me, to access and affordability in the post-secondary sector by being an education technology leader, delivering high quality uh, experiences online. Uh, someone says the word online to me and I get nervous. I still have trouble operating my phone. Maybe it's because <laughs> I graduated from Potts Grove in 65 and then came back to teach there and I'm old. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, 
he started in this field as a program manager and in uh, two, 2003 three, uh, at Dell Tech he moved into uh, qu quality learning experiences online. Whoops, I just screwed that up. Okay, he moved up the ranks there and then Wiley bought Dell Tech that he worked for and Wiley uh, bought Dell Tech for $220 million. He, Matt became a founding member of the executive leadership team and eventually became CEO and president of Wiley Educational Services. He's lived all over the place. He's been for a while in Florida and working out of Phoenix. And um, he, uh, his involvement in this field of education helped over 60 colleges deliver online degrees to over 60,000 people. Um, Matt left Wiley in 2019 to do consulting. And um, since 2019, He's been a board member of the Colebrookdale Railroad in Boyertown, assisting his buddy Nathaniel, who was also in that French class with him, um, and with uh, the financial aspects of uh, dealing with the railroad. The railroad has sort of put uh, Boyertown on the map for a unique place uh, to visit and go to. Matt is living in Kutztown now with his wife, Susan, and his two children, Maddie and William. However, he works in Chicago and has a rather unique commute. Uh, the company that he is working for now is coming up with some innovative things with textbooks and the fact that uh, textbooks should more or less be online. I didn't really understand a lot of what Matt has done, but he tends to grow companies and then kind of maybe move on to grow another company. Seems to be something that uh, he, he is very good at. Um, so right now he is currently employed uh, by Red Shelf, one of the nation's leading educational techno technology companies which distributes digital learning materials. And I guess they're a lot lighter to carry than those big heavy books. So, uh, Matt, uh, I'd just like to give, have you come up here and say a few words. Um, I'm so happy that you could be here today. Well, I'm really honored to be here. Uh, it's great to be home, uh, uh, even if it's just for the weekend. <laughs> um, but uh, to be back in Pennsylvania and to be honored by a place that's uh, very special to me and been very important on my journey. Um, as you indicated, <clears throat> I've spent my life as an entrepreneur in the, in the education technology sector, uh, which I entered um, uh, early in my career uh, learned my business skills, as, as Mrs. Zistany has indicated, by studying philosophy. No better, no better way to learn how to uh, engage educators uh, than to learn the classics. Um, and uh, I just want to say thank you, uh, because at first when I got the invite, I thought, well, I might be the punchline to a joke when I saw the other two inductees that was the old joke that everybody knows, a healthcare uh, professional who saves lives, a dedicated public servant, and a capitalist walk into a bar. I thought, well, this is, a, this is I'm the punchline to, to, my, to my own induction. Uh, but I'm, I'm really uh, uh, proud to be here. <clears throat> uh, and I'd like to uh, acknowledge um, uh, the fellow inductees and thank my family. Uh, they love me so much that they had other commitments today. Uh, so I have a 14-year-old and an 11-year-old. So those who know this age, uh, it is, it's a classic day of being an Uber driver and shuffling kids around. Uh, so um, I'll, I'll look forward to, to sharing this with them. But I did have a few things I wanted to say. You know, I, my family moved to the district in 1987. My dad worked at the power plant in Limerick, 
Uh, we moved from Northeast Ohio. Uh, and I was lucky enough that I got placed in Gary Reichenbach's uh, sixth grade uh, class. Uh, if you know Gary, uh, he's quite a, a, a robust individual uh, uh, and has a unique uh, a way of, of delivering his point. Uh, but it was exactly what I needed uh, at, at that time in my life. And, and most importantly, he sat me at a table where I met a lifelong friend and business partner. So my, my dear friend for 35 years, uh, Nathaniel Guest, is here, who somehow wrote me into also being on his board. I think he's actually here today to butter me up because I'm his treasurer on his board and he's probably got some financial ask that he wants to make later today. Uh, but I just wanted to say that uh, my journey through Pottsgrove uh, was really foundational, that it provided me uh, beyond uh, an amazing educational experience that was all of the things and the leadership skills that you, you uh, as a business professional, uh, particularly in today's environment, you spend most of your career coaching, that, that there were many things that you learned uh, as a Pottsgrovian, that you had all these opportunities uh, to learn and hone leadership skills of, and make mistakes and, and learn them in a very safe environment. And so uh, I'm very thankful for that because no one also told me that going to college as a first generation college student, that the, the, the odds are against you. Um, the graduation rates are very low for first-generation college students, and I attribute a large portion of my success to the foundation that I received uh, at a Pottsgrove education. Um, my family was, was also very supportive in that journey, and, and I thank them. But um, making a difference in the world and, and being in, on the business side of education, uh, while difficult, you know, part of where I've spent my life is to try and deploy capital and expertise and really smart people at tackling things to enable more people to get into the system, more people to graduate uh, with whatever it is that they're looking for, certificates, two-year degrees, four-year degrees, graduate degrees, what have you, and to lower the cost of education. And so uh, for every day that I'm able to, to walk and work, uh, I'll spend my days uh, fighting for more people to get access uh, to learning and and that they are able to do it in, in a low-cost manner and so I just want to thank everybody for the honor it was really great uh, to be here and uh, appreciate being included in such great company thank you Matt may be the only one that did four years of French. I remember Mrs. <laughs> David Heiser told me after I got my two years to go to college, she said, that's enough of French class for you, you're out. <laughs> um, it's my honor to, uh, our next inductee is Mr. Chad Saylor. Chad's a 19, oh, I like that, that's very good. A 1985 graduate of Pottsgrove, where he was a member of the National Honor Society and graduated with high honors while also being a member of the prestigious All-State Band and Orchestra program. Chad then matriculated to Lebanon Valley College where he ma graduated magna cum laude with his Bachelor of Arts in Political, Sci Political Science while minor minoring in German. He also enjoyed a year in Germany as an exchange student in his junior year. After graduating from Lebanon Valley, Chad began his career in politics in the Dauphin County area as part of the Republican State Committee of Pennsylvania. He then moved on to serve as Deputy Chief of Staff and Communications Director for Lieutenant Governor Jim Cawley from 2011 to 2014. Since that time, Chad has been elevated to the Chief of Staff for the Dauphin County Commissioners, where he currently oversees the daily operation of the county government with 1,600 employees and, three, and a $300 million budget. Chad and his family are members of the Cross Point United Methodist Church, and he still plays string bass with the Central Pennsylvania Symphony Orchestra. Please welcome to the dais, Mr. Chad Saylor. Congratulations. I'll give this to you. No, you live up to that introduction. Was, oh, <laughs> you see this you just sit right there. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that is something. You know, as a public official, uh, one thing, uh, one of the fun aspects of the job is we get to go around 
and hand out proclamations and awards and stuff to, to deserving people in the district. And you know, I always wonder is how how meaningful is it really to to get one of these and, and to now be on this side of the uh, uh, and actually receiving award. <laughs> This is pretty cool, I gotta say. This is really awesome. And uh, my brother is here, Austin, who's also a, uh, uh, a graduate of our school. And I think, Austin, I, this, this finally proves that I am better than you, I think. <laughs> so there you go. Although, uh, mom did like you best, I think. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is to, to be back here uh, amongst uh, some familiar faces. Uh, and to be honored like this, particularly when you see the, the honor roll list and so many uh, outstanding uh, folks and names that I remember uh, coming back. Uh, this is a real honor uh, to have your alma mater uh, recognize you uh, like this, and uh, I, I really appreciate it. Um, you know, uh, I, what I'd like to do, though, if you'd permit me, uh, I would like to accept this award uh, in memory of um, uh, Carl Snyder, and um, Lauren Chapis, uh, two classmates of mine, um, Carl, who died uh, before he graduated high school, and uh, Lauren died just recently. Uh, but two excellent folks uh, who, you know, uh, no doubt would have been uh, part of this as well uh, had they lived. But um, uh, on the way here, I, I, uh, I came here from Harrisburg with my wife, Christine, and my stepdaughter, Taylor. And uh, on the drive here, uh, you know, the memories came flooding back and uh, uh, reminiscing about my time at Potts Grove. Uh, nearly got us into an accident a couple of times. Uh, uh, <laughs> but the, um, uh, the one thing I, I did want to say is that, uh, uh, you know, in thinking about these memories, it, it, it just really occurred to me how my time at Potts Grove and uh, what I learned there, and my interaction, most particularly with the teachers, um, had such an influence on my life. And in many different ways, whether it's uh, my passion for music, uh, you know, I'm sorry Miss Zioli isn't here, but I mean, she brought music into my life and it completely changed uh, my life. Uh, Mr. Miko, my band director, uh, yelling at us on the marching field, uh, on the football fields we marched around. Uh, uh, Mr. Davidson and his, uh, well, anybody who had Mr. Davidson for a teacher's got a bunch of stories. Uh, but, uh, you know, his civics class, I'm sure, had, had a part in encouraging me to pursue the career I got into. Um, and it, I, I just think it's important and it's a message that, uh, that you guys need to hear because I'm sure, although I've never been a teacher, uh, I have some experience with uh, parenting. And uh, I'm sure, much like parenting, teaching has got to be, at times, exasperating, frustrating, uh, self-questioning, why did I get into this? Uh, and I, I just thought it was important. The message that I want to give to you guys is know that your life's work was impactful. You had, uh, you had impact on who knows how many uh, uh, different uh, people throughout your career. And on behalf of all those, I say thank you. And the fact that you are retired, and that you're, you're rather than dipping your toes in the sand and uh, you know, uh, watching the waves crash on the beach, you're here doing these kind of programs, picking people to recognize, shows your love of the district, love of, your, of education, and it's what makes this school district and this community so awesome, frankly. So I want to echo what your superintendent says. So thank you for what you're doing. Uh, thank you for this award. Uh, I am very honored and, I, uh, and just really delighted to be here. But thank you all for what you've done in your careers, and uh, I wish you all the best at this holiday season. Thank you. <laughs> Chad, we talked about this last year. You weren't here, but Mr. Davidson's legacy is we're still searching for the big gumball um, that is located somewhere in the uh, the uh, quad area so one day when it's recovered we'll bring that uh, along here as well um, to introduce our last inductee today is uh, Mrs. Rosemary Hoffman
Hi. I'm very happy and proud to introduce our third recipient. Her name is Sherry Wunderlich, and she graduated in 99. And I'm sure her parents, her mother and her husband and her family are also very proud of her. Um, Sherry is an oncology nurse at the Pottstown Cancer Center, and she has given many hours of help to her, her patients, and, and I was one of them. <laughs> I, I had uh, been diagnosed with cancer in 99, and that was the year that Sherry graduated. So in the middle of the year, I had to leave the, the school year and the um, teacher took over. But anyway, I, I, I always thought possibly um, that was one of the reasons that she went into it. I don't know. Uh, she's very passionate about helping her people. She even started a 5013C um, nonprofit called Stretch the Ride, and I'll let her talk to you about that for one of her patients in memory of that person. Um, she has many hours of taking care of people and her knowledge and expertise are just out of this world. Mm -hmm. I nominated her because I've run into her many times at the cancer center when I'd come to um, get my checkups and she was there as a friendly face and a familiar face so that was nice. Um, she also has done fundraisers, and I've met her at the bingos for the Stretch the Ride program, um, the Relay for Life, and so on. She's just one of my special people of my life. And now I get to see her every month because she has taken over the breast cancer support group. And we had um, not been meeting for about two years because of COVID, but now we're back. And, and she invites speakers and uh, interesting topics of conversation with the group. And it's, it's a very important part of my life. Um, she's balanced her family. She has two young sons and her career, very important to her. And I'm very proud. And that's it. That's my, I have the um, plaque there. Would Sherry please come up and accept us? <laughs> I assure you I'm an excellent nurse. I am not a public speaker, so to come up after a government official and a C-suite executive is a bit intimidating. Um, I can save a life, but I cannot speak publicly. So um, my, uh, my journey started at Potts Grove, and honestly, it was a, a pretty um, crazy time in my life. My stepdad was battling um, stage 3B lymphoma. Mom, you're going to make me cry. Um, and. Uh, Mrs. Hoffman was battling cancer. I wanted to be an attorney, believe it or not. Um, had my mind set on Penn State, had a full ride scholarship. I am not proud to say I lasted two months before I dropped out. Um, I liked my social life better than my studies. And um, my mom said, you can come back home, you're gonna work full time, and you're gonna go to community college, which was a huge ego hit to me as all my friends were away at school partying and having a grand old time. And I had to admit to my family that I lost a full ride scholarship to Penn State and why. So a very humbling time, very humbling year was uh, 1999 for me. Um, but I did get my act together. Um, I ended up uh, getting a full time job at the hospital. And Dr. Lambeau um, really encouraged me to become a nurse, which was never part of anything I ever thought for myself. Um, and I also met Peggy Neese, who some of you may know, she's a very big person in the community and they really taught me and mentored me which teachers do like the, to their point every day your impact is insane on young lives and so I guess my story is don't give up on the kids that are following a broken road because they really can be uh, successful and impactful in this world um, they really inspired me to have a worldview outside of myself um, I learned in my 20s and 30s what I think most people don't have a perspective on sometimes at 60 and 70 because of my work with oncology patients it really um, helps you to understand what 
is meaningful and, and what your purpose is in life uh, a lot quicker. And so that's been a total honor to take care of my patients. They've taught me so much more um, in this life than I ever could have learned on my own. And um, Stretch, William Smaltz was the owner of Harley Davidson in, on Route 100. Um, he was one of my patients. And I went to visit him as he was dying in the hospital and he said, Sherry, you are an incredible nurse and I don't ever wanna take away from that, but I would like you to start impacting people outside of the four walls of the hospital. Um, really, you know, these people need help when they're at home, they need help with their families. They, you know, cancer is devastating to the entire family. It's not just the patient. And I knew that from a personal level, but I was a very selfish teenager when I learned that. Um, and so I didn't realize the sacrifices of my mother. And um, so I, it really, it, it fired something inside of me. My husband organized a golf outing six weeks later because that's just how I am. Things got to get done right now. Um, and so we have raised over $400,000 and have been able to benefit over 36 fam. I think we just did 37th family um, with grants to help pay mortgages, keep utilities on. We keep, um, there was a child recently whose parents couldn't afford to keep him in the Catholic school. Um, they're going down to CHOP for treatment, so we paid his tuition to keep him in school because he shouldn't be uprooted, you know, in the middle of fighting cancer, God love him. Um, and little things, like we have a granddaughter who brings her grandfather in um, every day for radiation treatment. We sent her for a spa day at Hershey just as a thank you, something he couldn't afford to do for himself. Um, just little things. And so I learned um, how to make real impactful differences in the lives of others outside of myself. And it's something that while raising a 14 and 16 year old son um, who are very selfish and, and I, I try to really make them come to the fundraisers. I make them deliver the Christmas gifts to the underserved families that we give. And um, recently my son's football banquet, there was all this leftover food and they were gonna just throw it away. And I'm like, wait a minute, Mary's shelter is right down the road. Why don't we call and see? And my son was so irritated. He wanted to drive himself there first of all. He was irritated to have to ride with us because why, you know, our carbon footprints should be spread everywhere. Um, and so he was irritated to be riding with mom and dad first of all. And then he was really irritated to have to stay and help clean up all the food. And then even more irritated to have to drive to the shelter because, you know, he had TikTok or something to do and so we got to the shelter and um, we had all these cupcakes and dishes and we took the balloons and my husband was with us and uh, Bryce got really choked up because the staff said you know one of the little boys here tonight it's his birthday and now we can throw him a party and I said see Bryce your leftover food just made someone's entire day who's living in a shelter um, you really need to start opening up in life so um, at any rate I just I, I'm very honored because your positions are amazing, but um, I guess my story is just uh, that little people can, you know, make big differences too. So, thank you. Thank you for this. This is awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. The capitalist, the politician, <laughs> and the public speaker. That was tremendous. That was a wonderful message. At this time, it is the conclusion of this. You're more than welcome to stay and mingle. But uh, again, congratulations to our three inductees uh, and to everyone here. Have a safe and um, healthy holiday season. Thank you for attending. Goodbye.